Cool. So welcome today. I'd like to introduce Callan uh, Mantaberta. So sorry, okay. I hope I got that right. Yes, and also Sierra. Um, and Callan and Sierra have uh, created a, a relatively new business called Uncovering Hidden Gems. So welcome, Callan and Sierra. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Thank you very yeah. much. So, uh, Callum, uh, how, how long have you been in business for? So, yeah, nine, nine months. It's ticking over since April last year. We've um, been, yeah, kind of running this uh, little show. And, um, yeah, it's been an exciting ride ever since that, that, ever since we launched our website, for sure. Fantastic. And so tell us exactly what is it that you actually are doing? Yeah, cool. Um, so la last year, um, at the start of the year, I really um, had kind of that light bulb moment where I was just looking, looking through um, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. TikTok, all these kind of social media platforms and was seeing a bunch of videos that um, was all about like finding the finding cool spots around the world and also in our own country of Australia. And all these places were kind of always popping up and I'd save save them and then like them but then when i when it came to me actually wanting to be able to go to these places and like i had the chance to i could never find these videos and be able to formulate an idea of like where they were right so yep. I, I pretty much pieced together the issue that was not being able to figure out where these places were and a way of storing which was and then i organized it all into google maps so Jump, jumped on there and started to pin places on site inside okay. of, inside of Google Maps. And um, as I was pinning these places, I started to get a fair amount. And I was like, this seems to be rather valuable, like the amount of um, time I'm spending pinning these points down. Um, this could potentially be something that I could share to other people. Um, yep. And as, as that kind of idea grew, um, I organized a bunch of um, other scenarios trying to get into an app, but then the spark of the website came up and uh, that's when we've built a website that allows people to jump on, purchase their membership into a Google map or a mm -hmm. Google Live as um, other people might see it. And um, once they've got their email sent through to us, we tag them into the map and they can see every single change and every single hidden gem that we've researched over the last wow year. that that that's awesome man and so tell me do do um in researching and um all these hidden gems that we have around australia and, and obviously around the world are you physically going to them as well and and you know i i guess researching them right to the nth degree um, so a bit of a mix of both. So we just had an eight month road trip up and down the east coast of Australia. So we were lucky enough to visit plenty of hidden gems around there. But we've also got a lot of good friends in the travel community online and in person that have been really awesome to help us, give us suggestions of places that they've been to themselves and send us through footage that we can use for the maps and our social media. Um, and yeah, there's a lot that you can find if you dig right into the internet. Yeah. There's a lot of places. To be yeah. Found. We also spend a lot of time um, sifting through like even Google Maps in, in itself and we go in and um, we scroll right in and then you write, like you go around each marker and you yes. just go through read all the reviews just to see like what people are saying and what photos have come out of these places um, and if it's all shaping up to like a few comments in there like absolute hidden gem amazing spot you should go here and everything yep. like that then would be like yep yeah, that's the spot we should include inside the yeah. uh, inside. so so what's the top two spots that you you've visited so far um, from your point of view one of our favorites is a little national park in queensland about two or three hours inland of rockhampton right. um, at Paul blackdown tablelands national park and um, there's a massive waterfall there called rainbow falls um and there's some little hidden infinity pools and if you go further down there's like abseiling ropes and little rope ladders to get down through some secret caves and it's just you feel like you're in another planet it's like if, it's like you're in jurassic if you've world. seen the <laughs> if you've ever seen the film journey to the center of the earth it's kind yes. of it's really got that kind of energy as you're going down it's just like covered in ferns and then you come out into a big kind of open cavern 
and then there's a big cave on the other side with waterfalls coming down everywhere. It was, um, it's a really quite a special spot. And because the rope ladder is kind of off the beaten track, no one really goes there's down no there. no sign. So we just found um, it on accident when we were exploring yeah. one day and it's so, just, yeah. and it's crazy because it's in the middle of like the bush in Queensland, like all in amongst the mines and everything. You yeah. just don't expect it. No one knows really about the Blackdown Tablelands. So I plugged that onto the list. And then the other one is just, Blue Mountains. Blue Mountains yeah, is amazing. So like, many places in the Blue Mountains. So many um, incredible, from hidden, like from hidden waterfalls, hidden Caves. rock pools. Yeah. That are, um, yeah. yeah. It's, so, yeah. Funny. So, so, tell us a little bit more about your journey into the business. Um, what's been your biggest learning that you've had on that journey so far? Yeah. Well, I guess there's been so, so many learning curves that's gone on during our, like our time in business, you could say. Um, And probably the biggest one would have been right at the beginning when um, I was starting to think about the idea and how to formulate it into something that was going to be able to sell, like you could sell it. Um, I was I even had the idea of just building an app for myself. Can't I was just, just like, be yeah, able to jump on and do I'll it. jump in and build an app. And then, <laughs> with no coding experience, or anything. I'm like, I'll watch a couple of YouTube videos and I'll be, I'll be right to go. And then, as soon as I watch about ten minutes of a YouTube video, I'm like, this is going to take me six years. Yeah. Like, I, I just mm. knew straight away I was way out of my depth. Started to, like figuring out how I was going to get around that, and obviously as um, like an entrepreneur kind of mindset, you need to just keep finding ways finding another way. to get around things if you hit a roadblock. And I managed to, I spoke to a few different crowds to try and make an app. And um, we ended up getting hit with price tags of up to 200 grand um, wow. to get it, to get something, an app off the ground. And then um, we were just, that was another huge, another roadblock for um, us. <laughs> huge hit in the guts. So, so like we, veered away from the that's when we veered away from the app and went more into the website the, towards the website so then mm-hmm. we proved the, the concept proved the concept sells um yeah. so the learning curve was just the yeah genuinely not knowing <laughs> not knowing yeah. so so tell me in terms of when you identified that there was a, a major roadblock how did you actually work around that thing we were definitely stuck for quite a bit. Like when we realised that we couldn't afford to get an app just made through a company, we were definitely just like, what do we do? I also, I approached a um, company that was a, a lot more of a, not necessarily like a, a, what's the word, a developing like for app development, but it was more of an entrepreneurial like startup course, crash course on how to, um, yeah, how to solve problems and how to create business essentially and I um, approached these guys and they gave me a bit of a, um, a book and a course on it was all just online um, for me to dot everything off and just have mm-hmm. a try and dig deeper into how I can get this idea to work and when I was going through that crash course I pretty much like that's when the idea kind of sparked it wasn't necessarily it came up on the screen that this was a good way to go but it was just I was thinking enough for it to be able to veer my head off into how it was going to work and I started yeah, looking. Yeah. Like, so it, it, it prompted you to think of okay you know, let's open the, the, the doorway yeah. and see you know what path is going to be the best. But, and the minimum viable minimum viable product so that was the that was the key the the key subject that i was looking at i was like how can i make this as cheap as possible so i can prove that the concept will sell Mm -hmm. and then um well the next all the rest will kind of tick along if uh, we can talk to investors and everything once we've proven proven the concept so yeah yeah, there you go fantastic so what what has been i guess the key personal learning that you've gone through for yourself or yourselves? Um, Definitely. I don't know. I guess when we first thought of the app, we just thought we were going to have an app and then it was going to be out in six months and everything was going to be perfect. And I guess we've learned a lot of patience that everything, like you can't build a business overnight. Mm. It takes a lot of time and a lot of hours and a lot of effort. 
Um, but yeah. And also it's just managing good. your business to, to life kind of work life um, balance, work life <laughs> balance. Yeah. yeah. I've been, I, I'm one that uh, ever since I was little, I've always just like, if I had something I wanted to do, I'd just go 1000% hyper focus on it. And then I would just dig myself into the ground and then I'd be in bedridden for like a week. So I just always can't like slow down on something. So yes, over this still, period, still learning. over this period, yeah. it's still been definitely the same, but I'm finding ways to be able to uh, make a schedule and really be able to do the stress-free kind of things like go out to the Go out to the, to the beach, beach without feeling be, guilty be for with, not working. <laughs> yeah, be with your mates. And yeah. rather than yeah. being at a beach just to be able to think about the business, I'll be at the beach just to be. Yeah, yeah. So, so what other ways have you identified that works for you in keeping that balance on an even keel? Um, I think... I think, uh, yeah, I'm still, I'm still working on it. Honestly, yeah. it's um, something that is a is a major player in the way that, um, especially when you're starting in that first phase of the business, which is really getting um, people to know about it and having to build proof that it's that we're a viable, yeah, business. product. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's yeah, it's you kind of always on the go and your brain's always turning. But I think always just making sure you build a um, a schedule for the day and you have a list of the important things that you want to tick off. Yeah. Um, once those things are done, um, you save yourself some time to go and do something else that doesn't even switch off. Really. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. require any thought about um, what you just did and what the business is doing. So um, that's kind of, I just make maybe a list of five to six things and then I do yeah. that and then I pause and then maybe come back. Yeah. Okay, if I can recommend a book for you, would that be okay? Yes, yeah, please. <laughs> All right. The book's called The Go Zone. Go Zone. And a, it's been authored by Mark McKeon. And, uh, in fact, uh, he, in one of our upcoming membership uh, events, uh, he's going to be a guest speaker for us. And where, where he talks about the go zone is, is when you're in the zone, you know, he calls the go zone, the work zone, I think it's called, and also the no zone. So the no zone is when you completely switch off from everything. And the go zone is when, you, when you're really in the zone, you, you switch off everything that burps, beeps, and makes yeah. funny noises um, and just concentrate on what you're doing. But it, it, it limits the time blocks to which you're actually doing that. So... It, uh, an absolute great book. Um, I heard him speak at one of our conferences oh, probably five or six years ago. And, um, yeah, so I'm excited that he's going to uh, do a bit of a, a guest se a section in our upcoming membership uh, event. So I um, highly recommend that book to help you find <laughs> that, that yeah. balance. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That is yeah. a good point because, like, I feel like when I'm working – Sometimes I still have my other distractions around like your phone or um, you've got other people you're thinking about going to see later. So you just kind of, if there was a time period that I put down on paper, that I was like an hour, just going straight into what I need to do for the, for yeah. the business. And then, and then I tick it off and I'm like, no zone. Yeah. So yep. I'll yep. Like I will have a, I'll have a look. Yeah, um, no, that's great. And look, I'm really impressed that you're really open to learning as well. So what, what, what are some of the other learning things that you've done that's helped you to get to where you are today? Oh, um, yeah, I guess just doing that, doing that crash course was a huge one. Yeah. Um, and also just talking to as many people that are, more advanced in this world we than, than what we are essentially yes. um just speaking to people that are um yeah going to give at least one at least one piece of advice at a time and it's just um you got to make sure you hear the advice and you also take it in and potentially apply it later on um yeah, yeah i really do like kind of putting myself into myself into situations that 
um, requires a bit of bit of thinking. Yeah. So yeah. Sure. Oh, look, I I can only uh, applaud you and congratulate you on having that mindset because uh, it's interesting. I, I I did another interview this morning with somebody who's a little bit in the vintage age of <laughs> that, that that I am, and one of the things that he spoke about was. You know, the experience that, that people like us have, um, you know, if I take my kids, for example, um, you know, sometimes they're not open to listening to some of the experience and, and pass it off only to go and make the same mistake twice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I, look, I really applaud you for having that, that mindset, Callum. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, um, where it came from, but I think, I think it's just... Something my parents have given to me, which is very, yeah, I'm very grateful for it, for sure. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, when you think about, you know, um, what keeps you focused every day? Have you got any favourite sayings or quotes that, that you keep referring back to to help keep you on track and, and focused? Hmm. Mm. Nothing, nothing really springs to mind in terms of, like, uh, yeah, and even just um, like idols and that kind of who who really I can see yes. through. Well, well, Ned Brockman, I guess. I don't know if you've ever heard of the guy Ned Ned Brockman. Uh, no, I haven't. No? He ran uh, whilst we were away. We'll follow him on Instagram, and he ran all the way from Perth to Bondi Beach over the course of like. Oh seven. yes, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, I know who you mean now. Yeah, like yeah. following him so much. Like obviously, what he was doing is like a physical thing, but. I think his whole mindset of like you can literally do anything and he like pushed his body to the complete limit and he got injured after like a week but he still just got it done and yeah he's and the whole inspirational idea, to us. The whole idea of like get comfortable being, being uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Yeah that's his saying. Which is so cool. yeah. Um, that yeah that is definitely one that resonated with us when he was yeah, gone. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. I yeah. absolutely um, love that quote. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know it's Look, the only way that you can grow as an individual and as a person is that you have to go outside your comfort zone. So exactly. yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that's awesome. Um, in terms then of uh, if you were to start your business again, what would you do differently next time? Um, it's a tough one. I feel like <laughs> everything's kind of happened and For a it's, reason. Just, it's just um like the learning, even if there was something that went wrong, I feel like always something's come out of it's it. It's given me an advantage later on anyway, because right, I knew, yep. um I've been able to learn I, otherwise if it didn't go wrong, we never would have then I might it. it might happen again in the future. So it's kind of yeah. like yeah. I, don't, I don't see and in the position we're in today, we're super um yeah real in high hopes of what's going to happen um, in the yeah. next um, few months to a year um, so I think yeah I don't think I, don't think I can't see anything that I could that yeah. I would do differently. yeah okay now that, that's great so I guess it's a good good uh, segue into what does the future look like for you and what do you see as being the main challenges moving forward well the obviously the the next phase so the releasing of, a, of of an actual mobile app and um the, we've been able to um get some developers that we've made made friends and acquaintance well good uh, friends now yeah actually good friends with through linkedin um yes. it's um very it's great. It's yeah, it, was, with him. it was a massive kind of um yeah um it was such a blue moon scenario when we reached out to them and they ended up being at the right stage in their life where they were like, yeah, we're happy to drop it all. We're really passionate about the idea that you're, that you're working towards. And um, because of that, they were, uh, they really almost came in for free and, and they wanted a piece of the business, which is, you How can't say that. Yeah. There's definitely value in there. But um, for that to happen was, um, we've just been slowly working into that next layer, which is the, We'll see how it's going to hit when it all comes out, but I think yep. I think it's um, that's going to be the next big um, big task and working out how to 
approach the marketing of and transition from uncovering hidden gems to yeah we, we're yeah. changing our whole um business kind of um the app name will be different so. yeah because uncovering hidden gems is more of like a slogan and not really a um it's not a, like an app name it's not so sure right. <laughs> we've got we've got another um kind of bit of branding that we want to change over so i think that's going to be a quite challenge. a quite an interesting task mm -hmm. but yes. uh, yep. i think It'll be very achievable right. at this, yeah, at this point. Um, so, but the near future, that's what's going to be happening there. And then we've also got plans to um, just keep on traveling and yeah. just keep on finding new spots. And yeah, so Australia globally, um, we're where, hopefully where, where's the road going to take you? Yeah. So we're hopefully heading to Bali in March for six months, um, Indonesia, so we can sort of backpack around there and just explore. All of the hidden gems that Bali has to offer. Yeah, so that'll be we, next on our list. Because we've got a Bali map up at the moment and we've done all the research for that. And then um Carl's and we've been, been to Bali over, quite a few times. Yeah, and I've been over there a few times. And yeah. it's, yeah. Just, it's a lot easier to travel around to that kind of small um, it's a lot smaller than island, Australia. <laughs> island life rather than having to road trip three hours yeah. to a different destination. So We'll head there and next. spend a million dollars on fuel. Like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, look, it, you know, I, I think it's really exciting what uh, you know, the journey that you're on um, and what a wonderful way to have a business where you're actually having lots of fun with it at the yeah. same time. It's awesome. Yeah. That, that's kind probably, of feels that's surreal. probably another, <laughs> another motto I saw the other day and another quote was um, it's just if you don't, don't think about the uh, – a good a good job that gives you a lot of time off think about the job that you'd want to be like you don't want to escape from yeah so that's yes. that's um that's the big mindset that i've always gone like with if you the, find a job you love you'll have a work a day in your life yeah exactly yeah <laughs> yep, yep. And I look at, I, you know, I can hear the passion that you've both got for uh the business and what you're doing and um yeah i i really really wish you well with that um so good luck and thank you for your time today um, I, I, I really look forward to following your journey and and make sure that you know when you when the app comes out that um you know, you let us everybody know about it because um you know that'll be one of the things that when when we do our our trip around the australia is you know looking for those those, those hidden hidden places those hidden gems as you call them yeah, um, yeah because it's uh you know living but, up on, on the murray it's uh it's yeah. pretty flat and, yeah. and whilst but, it's got its own attractions yes uh, yeah who doesn't lo love a remote little fishing spot so, yeah it's good um that's yeah we're, we're here to help yeah. yeah okay thank you for your time today um and as i said i look forward to following your journey with you Yes, Perfect. thank as, you, Phil. As do we. Thanks, Phil. Okay, bye now. Yeah. See you, Phil.